Hello guys, Sapri here from FEFO and in today's video we'll have a look at this heated cavity simulation using Code Saturn, which is an open source software uh, for flow simulation developed by uh, EDF R&D uh, and we will have a look at this into Salome CFD. So this is the temperature plot that I'm getting at the end. This is the velocity streamlines and there is um, all the process of this tutorial is detailed in this PDF so that's what I will show you how to go through a uh, heated square cavity flow so let's have a look a bit at this um, description of the problem first and what we will be doing in this simulation because there is a lot of stuff in this uh, in this PDF tutorial and it's lot of parts and really not easy to to get together uh, especially at the end the code part so I'm gonna show you how to uh, set up all those things so let's talk about the tutorial first so the model so here's the model it's a very simple model it's a cavity of one meter per one meter and uh, you have in terms of flow you have basically no flow condition around so the flow is is uh, fixed and the only condition in terms of flow are the non-slip wall condition on the four uh, walls now how will this fluid move if I do not apply a velocity or something well it's moving because of the temperature difference within this cavity so it's a it's called a natural convection simulation and it's generally used to simulate the cooling of um, electronic equipment, for example. So pretty, pretty useful type of uh, simulation. Um, and in terms of temperature, so basically um, we will have 30 degrees on the left side and um, 20 degrees on, on the right side. Um, then we'll have the gravity force, which is very important here and uh, what will drive the change the temperature um, to to change into this and the velocity to be created is a force called the buoyancy which is um, created by both the difference of temperature and by the gravity uh, effect so this um, this problem is explained here um, very nicely um, and basically we will be studying studying um, laminar case so the Reynolds number will be fixed at uh, 10 uh, power 6 and um, and for the buoyancy we'll be using those equations here which are um, defined so there's a bit of theory here and actually the the why this tutorial is difficult is um, is because we'll have to code this uh, as a user code in a C or Fortran and put that into the model uh, so that the um, this buoyancy effect can be uh, calculated. So that's uh, the tricky part of this tutorial. So here you have the fluid properties that will be used. Boundary condition I just told them to you, but they are pretty simple. Um, we are in laminar flow so th those are the buoyancy uh, equations so the density will change in function of um, uh, the difference of temperature that's basically what it's uh, saying and uh, this is the relation basically that will define how this density will change in function of temperature okay and um, after that it's basically describing how to set up the simulation so that's what we will uh, be doing right now so let's start okay so I just opened Salome CFD uh, and I'm gonna do the whole tutorial uh, within Salome CFD now a quick word if you don't have Salome CFD installed I have another video showing you step by step how to install it uh, and it's uh, pretty documented on the webs on my blog as well where I show you exactly the steps to do it uh, now it's really a bit complicated so if you cannot install Salome CFD um, there's no problem at all 
to just use Salome, uh, norm, normal Salome without the, the, the Code Saturn module in it and install separately Code Saturn. And then you can just use Salome like that and uh, use Code Saturn, um, you know, outside of Salome. That, that's fine as well. It should work. Um, the only really advantage to use Salome CFD is that you have everything into one uh, pretty nice interface. So I like to use this. But you know, um, you know the the difficulty to install it is uh, being all honest. If you have to spend two weeks to to <laughs> figure out how to install it, yeah, better to just uh, use it separately. Now, uh, okay, so now let's start. Let's um, let's go by the by doing the mesh. So the first step of this tutorial will be to create the geometry of this cavity and the mesh. Now, if I go back to this tutorial. I see that they propose two options for uh, the meshing. So you can either um, import the mesh. Yeah, well, that's suppose that you already created it. So you can either create the mesh uh, in the way that I've been using in the previous tutorials. So that's what I'm I am going to do. So I'm going to show you exactly how to create this mesh. Or you can generate the Cartesian mesh using this new option of uh, Code Saturn 7, I think. Um, and it's pretty cool. It allows you to actually um, use some kind of Cartesian grid um, that will automatically generate uh, the model. So, you know, you give it the number of cells in each direction. And yeah, and you can generate the model like that. So it's pretty fast and uh, and if you're interested in that, well, please, uh, by all means, try it. Now, I'm going to go with the traditional option because uh, it's um, it's the way that has been done before. And uh, it's a bit more useful if you're using a previous code Saturn version. So I'm going to show you the, the, the way to do it using uh, Geom module first. So let's use Geom module. Let's open that into Salme. Um, and again, if you don't have Salme CFD, you can do that in the normal Salme. Uh, let's create a box. And um, let's put the right dimensions. So the unit will be in meters. So one, one, and the Z direction will be 0 0.01. Apply. And I don't see anything because the model is actually very small. So I have to rescale that and there is a button reset. So click on this and you see now the model is uh, looks good. So it's uh, actually almost ready. <laughs> well, not exactly. I have to mesh it first. So um, in order to mesh it, I have to generate the groups with that will be useful for the meshing. So let's go. There is first, um, there are some cool options to generate edge groups more easily. And I think it's, um, yeah, so go into operations block propagate. That's it. Um, and then you choose this model. You click on apply and close, and you see that it created three groups that contains the edges in a different direction. So that will be useful for the meshing. We'll see why after that. So to be for easiness, I'll just rename the group which is going in Z direction. Let's call that Z. Z edge like that and the other two I could rename them also X and Y but you no know, I'm I'm just gonna use it for the meshing so uh, I'm just gonna la leave them like that now um, I have to define the other phase groups that will be used to assign the boundary conditions so let's go into groups create groups and now I have to create phase groups and let's go to cr to uh, create all the correct groups. So let's create the cold wall group first. So there's just one face here that I select, add it here, and let's give it a name, cold wall. Okay. Apply, and that's done. Now let's flip the model like this. Select so this edge here. This will be the hot wall. Apply. Now uh, let's select the the face in the bottom and the face on the top. 
sorry, I only selected one. Okay, so there are two faces here. And those will be called adiabatic walls. So, yeah. Always put this small underscore instead of leaving the blank because uh, if you have a blank in the name of the groups, sometimes it creates a problem. So, yeah, just saying that so that you know. So, uh, okay, so and now we have to select this face here and at the same time the face on the bottom and th those will be the symmetry plane because it's um, it will be a 2D simulation but the model is 3D so we need to say that those two planes will be uh, symmetric planes and that's it so I have my edges and I have my faces group and that's all I need so now I can switch to the mesh module um, and let's go for create the mesh let's go and um, select exhydron IGK for the method and here we'll have quadrangle mapping and for the 1D method we'll have um, we'll have wire discretization and we need to set up a certain number of segments so in the tutorial if you search they are setting up for 80 segments okay apply and close ah sorry so it tells me the object is not defined okay I have to actually select the box here yeah okay now uh, I can't mesh that right away because if I would do that it would put 80 elements in the Z direction which is really too much I just want one element in the Z direction so I have to create a sub mesh and um, that's where this Z edge is um, useful and I will put a wire discretization for and put only one segment here so that will mesh it with one element and then uh, the rest so now, now I can try to compute this so it seems to have worked and I have 6400 volume elements the mesh looks good. Now we need to create the the face group. So now, which is nice right now is that those uh, mesh groups are automatically created. So before you had to use a function to create that, but now they seem to appear automatically in the mesh. So if you're in an older version of Salome, you'll have to use um, you'll have to use create groups from geometry uh, to to get those. But right now seems that I'm getting those um, automatically so that's pretty nice so let's save your model let's rename that Let, let's have a look at what is the name of this HSC mesh so I'm gonna give the same name to my um, mesh ah oh, sorry uh, not edit rename okay and uh, should be some underscore again right okay uh, and now let's export that so I'm not sure I should I have to export it or not but it's always better to save it somewhere just in case there is a problem so let's export that um, into so let's create a new folder called heated cavity 3 let's call that 3 so you can call it 1 if you want but I've already done two of those so this is the third one and um, again HSC mesh in med format save that and now my mesh is ready and uh, I'm ready for setting up the model in the code saturn
Okay, so let's switch to the code setter module. And uh, now I do not see any change that, but the only change that this menu here appeared. So this will allow me to create a new study. So I'll click on this button. And now I have to create a study that I will call what? Create study. Okay, so I don't know why. Yeah, so I'm choosing this folder. Okay. Study name will be heated cavity. Let's call it three again. Or maybe I just go call it like that because it will be inside this folder. Anyway. Um, and the name of the case will be case one. Code Saturn. Okay. Okay. That makes this appear here. And what has just happened is that if I go to my folder So if I go to the folder where I have the this heated cavity, I see that I have the file structure for my code Saturn study that has been created. So I have case one which contains data, resu and SRC, and I have mesh and post. So what I have to do is to take this mesh and drag and drop it into the mesh mesh folder. And uh, now Let's open, go into the tree here. Let's open the setup.xml. So usually it should open into the GUI. Um, if it doesn't, just click open an existing case like that. And um, go into your case data setup XML open that and you should see the code Saturn uh, GUI that will appear again if you don't have Salme CFD no worries you can get this uh, code Saturn GUI separately as well so this will be exactly the same thing um, okay so now I have to go through the different steps to create the mesh so the first is to go to the mesh here and click on the plus here and select the mesh I just created and add it into here. Second step will be to go to um, boundary zone. No, there's, um, let me check, boundary zone. Do I need boundary zones? Yeah, so boundary zones is where you have to define um, the the mesh groups that you created in the mesh. So actually what you can do is um, so if you are into Salome CFD like I am you can select the phase group here click on add or oh, sorry add from Salome and you see that it will automatically add it. Now if you are you are not into Salome CFD and you don't have this fancy interaction <laughs> you can click on add, add four boundary condition like that, and then you just have to um, manually replace, double click here and replace with the name of the boundary condition. So um, I'm gonna do like this, select those three, add from Salome. Ah, okay, I have to add them separately like that. Okay. And um, yeah, that's done. Now the label here, uh, you could keep those BC1, BC2, BC3, BC4, but it's not very, uh, um, not very talkative. So you can change that to something uh, a bit better. So I like just to take the same name for the selection criteria here and basically call the label with the same name that way. It's less confusing. Okay, and now this is done. 
Next step is to set up the turbulence model. And because this is a laminar study, there is no turbulence model. So I have to choose laminar here, no model, laminar flow, which is the easiest because I won't have to define any kind of uh, additional coefficient or something like this. So thermal model, I have to define a temperature scalar. So we will define a study in Kelvin. So I'll choose temperature Kelvin. I could define it in Celsius as well, but um, into body force, we have to define the gravity. So don't forget this. So minus 9.81. Uh, species transport nothing volume condition no, in volume condition we want to check that to add some initialization condition so what it does is that in the next window you see that we have um, this tab to define the, the different material uh, coefficients um, the flow coefficients and we have this tab initialization that appeared and so you have to check this in order to get this tab appeared here. Uh, now let's define the right values for those. Now the first thing to do is to change this uh, density to user low because this will be a variable and uh, this variable will be changed into user code. So we'll see later how to do this. Uh, if the expression you want to use is simple, you don't actually need to use user code. You could uh, click here and put the equation into here. You write this so you have some example on how to do this. Because here we have something a bit more complicated, so we'll not use this. But we you still have to activate user low. Now, uh, reference value. So pressure will be the value 1.20. 39 viscosity will be y n so this is correct for the viscosity a specific heat will be 0 1004.84 and the thermal conductivity will be 0 0.0259 Yes, okay. Now let's go to in initialization. The velocity will be set up to zero like that. So we'll just click on it and then click on OK to initialize. And for the thermal, we want initialization by formula. Then, so you see it's red. So you click on it. And after you define the temperature, so this will be the initial temperature within the volume. And the value you want to define here is, um, so it will be initialized at 20 degrees, so 283.15, okay, in Kelvin units. Okay, and now it becomes green, so that means that it's okay. It's now let's go for the boundary conditions. So click first on here, boundary conditions. And we have to double click here and choose symmetry. So that's pretty important um, because those two planes will, if you don't select that, it will be considered as a 3D study. Um, so you don't want this. So click symmetry and the other three, uh, three conditions will be walls. And now we have to, to set them up one by one. So cold wall is a smooth wall with uh, temperature of prescribed value of 293.15 like this and the hot wall will be let me just check the power point so you have those condition just to be sure that this is correct so in this the initial condition is here. We are those boundary conditions. I think it's uh, before that. Uh, 
yeah okay so uh, the cold wall is is correct and the uh, hot wall is 303.15 so this is the hot wall prescribed value 303.15 okay now we go in adiabatic wall and then prescribe outgoing flux of zero so we just leave this value which is fine so it's adiabatic, heat flux going out of those two faces on the bottom and top will be zero flux. And symmetry plane, well, there's nothing to set up here, it's, uh, it's done. Now, um, let's go to the time setting. And um, here we have to change the type of computation, which will be time varying. So we are doing a transient simulation here. Um, and we're using a simple C algorithm. And what we have to define here is reference time step 0, 1 is uh, OK, maximum. So I'm just using the values that are basically given into the, um, the PDF. So just change that to 8, um, 0, 1. And the stopping criteria number of time step will be 450. And uh, let's save all of this. So don't forget to click here to save the Salome study and here to save the code Saturn um, study. Okay, um, let's have a quick look at the PDF just to be sure I haven't forgotten the steps. So time setting, numerical parameter tab. Okay, what do I need to do here? Go in the equations. Uh huh leave the old default setting and move to the equation parameter subsection the solver tab show that pressure velocity and temperature are solved for click on scheme tab for better convergence okay so we have to change to a centered scheme for all variable but unselect the slope test unselect the slope test okay so it's funny that it tells me to unselect but the the image shows that it's selected so um, anyway let's do what they say let's go in numerical yeah equation parameter scheme and instead of automatic choose centered here and deactivate the slope test right. so those are pretty advanced stuff um, and you'll have to dive into the you know the documentation of this to understand what this really does but basically it's to um, increase a bit the, the accuracy of the calculation for this kind of model uh, if you are using triangles i know for example um, tetra elements in your model you'll have to use specific parameters here to be sure that um, it converts correctly so that's in this case that can be pretty useful to know about this um, Let's have a look. Post-processing tab, what do I need to do here? Um, and select Y plus stress and T plus. Okay, and select, so post-processing. Where is this volume? Okay, stress, Y plus, and uh, what do, what do we need? The boundary layer, no salt. T plus. Uh, okay, so we need to add the no salt boundary condition. Um, okay, so that's all I think. Activate this, and this is all that needs to be done in the GUI. Now comes the the fun part. Well, for me, it wasn't really fun because it, it took me a few weeks to figure out how to do this. And really, if you look at this tutorial, it's tell you, okay, programming the Buzanesk model with user coding. And that's where it's really become hard because, uh, first of all, it tells you, you can, you can take this CS user physical properties.c from the tutorial reference. Uh, but, you know, nowhere it tells you where this tutorial actually is. And, and that's, you know, 
I don't know, you know, I searched everywhere to find where in my computer, in the in all the files I could find this, but it wasn't uh, anywhere to, to be found. So, and then it tells you, okay, you have to do all the steps here, but it never gives you the actual solution. So please, if you are someone walking right now with Code Saturn in, and you are in charge of editing this PDF, please add a solution here for <laughs> for people who you know you know are not so um, let's say are not geniuses and don't know how to uh, to do all of this because we'll see it's it's pretty difficult so let, let me show you though the way we'll do it is that I will show you where you can actually find the answer because there is a solution somewhere but you know you you have to know where it is to actually to actually find it so, and the uh, solution is on GitHub. Yeah, you have to go on the Code Saturn GitHub repository. So go to the Git GitHub website, github.com, search for Code Saturn repository. So that's the first one, Code Saturn. And uh, go back to the main, the main website, and you see that they have six repositories into it. And uh, if you click on the list of repositories, you'll see that they have a repository which is called Saturn Tutorials. So click on this one and bingo, that's where you find all the answers. So go to this heated square cavity and you have, uh, so you can actually download everything. That's what I did. I developed, downloaded it on my computer. And what you'll have to to do is to use this uh, CS user physical properties dot C file, and uh, yeah, you see the the files look like this. And let's you know, let me show you how to um, to put this file into your um, Code Saturn case. So let's so I have downloaded this on my desktop. And um, here it is, case one, SRC. And there are two files here actually because um, later on in the tutorial they will tell you to add extra operations. So now I'm just interested in this one. So let's copy that. And so I'm not. I, I'm going to copy it first, and then I'll sh uh, I'm going to open it and show you how this how, how you're supposed to work through this without knowing the solution. And but I'm telling you, it's almost impossible if you you have never worked with Code Saturn. It's just impossible to find that by yourself. Um, okay, so where is my study? It's Code Saturn projects heated cavity. Go into your case SRC file, which, and just paste this file here. So, okay, so now if you look at the PDF here, and you look at what they tell you to do, so to, to basically, what you're supposed to do is take a reference file, which is somewhere, so if you find it, um, well, let me know. <laughs> it is somewhere, but I, I've never found this file actually. So, um, and then you, you are supposed to use the method which is defined in it, which is called CS user physical properties, which is this method here. And there should be some kind of template telling you a bit some kind of way to use the functions. Uh, and then what you have to do is declare your own variables, then activate the example. Uh, and by the way, this is for Fortran example, not C example. But uh, anyway, let's have a look. Uh, specify Rayleigh number, then you have to compute the gravity vector, you have to impose domain size and temperature from problem setup, you have to compute the, expo the expansion coefficient, cycling through the internal cells, and then finally compute density maximum and minima for output purpose. And um, yeah, and that's that's all you have to do in this file. So what, what you need to do is to to have this file, 
most of what you see here will already be there and the only thing you need is to edit this method here so this CS user physical properties method and add what needs to be done so the different steps they tell you here you have to write them here into this file so let's go through all those instructions so the first instruction here is check fields exists so what this does is that there is a function called csf row uh, equal null so if you have this condition it will give you an error so what this means basically is that if you're in if you're in your code certain uh, interface here in the density low you have forgot to change it to the user low and it's still a constant then um, this will basically give you an error so that that's what this code is actually uh, doing then um, it's it save it's create a new variable called n cells which is a number of cells you have in in the whole model and the way it gets the number of cells is using a function called cs glob mesh uh, and this fun this method has um, has an n cells variable so th sorry this um, I guess it's a class or something it's a this class has a uh, this uh, oh, sorry it's a it's a pointer so this is a pointer so that's why it's a uh, how do you call that an attribute of this pointer called n cells so you save the number of cells using this so all all these functions here you're supposed to get them from the developer documentation so it's written somewhere on the website or in the, the PDF of the documentation so but it's good to look at the example first because like I told you before it's difficult to <laughs> to imagine how to do this if you've never done it before um, now this create um, create a pointer here for this um, row so row is the density here so we're getting what, what we're getting is we're using CSF row val so this is the way to get the density as a variable and to save it as a pointer um, and uh, and we see that this is a variable pointer so it can change but here we have const which means that the other pointer we're, we're getting here like the temperature or the gravity those are constant pointers so this will not be um, will not be changed afterwards so we're using the same way to get density the temperature and we're using another function to get the gravity and now we have temperature density gravity um, then what we do is that we use this CS glob fluid properties to get the initial density the CP0 so the thermal um, what is called thermal well those are basically what is defined here the um, so CP0 is specific heat right specific heat viscosity etc so specific heat lambda 0 and the viscosity um, then you define the Rayleigh number so this is given in the tutorial it tells you the Rayleigh number is set up as 1 um, 1 power 6 now and this this is where you define the hot temperature the L length of this and the T call and the gravity is well we're, we're interested at the the norm of the gravity so what we do here is that we calculate the square root of um, the three gravity uh, because gravity is a vector right so we have to take the three components of the gravity calculate the square roots of the all those components which are squared so this this is a way to get the square value sq um, and we get the, the the g j value and and now we calculate the beta so this beta is what 
So now we are in this step here. Compute the expansion coefficient for the physical properties, the beta. So if you go back at the beginning, when I was showing you the formula, here is the beta. So that's what we're calculating now. We calculate the beta first, and then we calculate density from this beta coefficient. So the beta coefficient is constant all over um, over all the, the, the elements. So we we just have to basically take all those value we have extracted and calculated. And here we have to um, we have to go through the cells. So there is a for loop here. So that's why we have the number of cell n cells that have been extracted before. Um, and this for loop is used to calculate the density over all the cells. So for so that that's what we do. So we get the temp cells and we calculate all this. And at the same time, we calculate the minimum density and maximum density using the f min and f max function. And that's it. You know, that's almost it. And then at the end, um, CS parallel min and max. Yeah, I think this is if if you're using MPI, you'll need to use this method in order to um, to have real the minimum over the whole model instead of uh, the minimum and maximum over just the, the, the specific partition. And this here prints those value somewhere. So I think it's in the, the listing file. Okay, and that's all you needed to do. You know, you, you needed to to get all of this from those different steps that have been listed here. So at least now you understand more or less how this code works and you can modify it a bit to suit your own case. So now we can go through the computation for this. So let's go back to my case and let's compute this. So let's go into, yeah, let's click on this run. Now let's click on this run a computation icon. Don't forget to save your study and everything first. Now you can choose the number of processor you want to use. So if you use more than one, you'll need to have open MPI installed on your computer. So make sure you have uh, this. So for this, this is a small model. Actually, I don't really need to use several processors. So I just use one and click on run calculation. And now we just have to hope that it will work. Now it starts to calculate and um, and it should very quickly tell you. Okay, so uh, it didn't print anything, but it didn't print any error either. So I think it worked. So I click on OK and uh, let's have a look at the results. So the way to look at the result is to go back into your case study and you see that in the Rizu folder you have uh, one new folder with the results that have appeared here. So I can open it into Salome CFD in the tree here and um, results fleet domain dot case and I'm just exporting that in Paravis. So let's go into Paravis. So this is the pressure. And let's have a look at temperature. And uh, it's, it looks uh, OK, actually. Yeah, it looks like it worked. So uh, now the result look like there are a lot of, uh, let's say, it's uh, results per surface. So it's. What I have to do is to apply a filter. So go into filter and uh, there is um, cell 
cell data to point data. So apply this. And now it looks smooth because it has averaged the result um, from cell data to point data. So now if I look at the temperature, it looks like this. And um, now let's have a look at what in the tutorial I was supposed to get. So pulse processing. Let's check. So the temperature is looking like this, like temperature is aligned. So how do you uh, generate this? Well, first, let's go into the color map. So if you don't have this color map, just go into view window and uh, activate it. And activate it here. And um, now what I'm going to do is uh, let's change a bit the color to blue to red rainbow. And uh, let's decrease the number of colors. So I have 256 colors. Let's choose 12 colors. Let's start to look like, um, like what I got here, except that they want to see the contour. So to get the contour, I have to apply a contour filter. So filter, filter, where is my contour? Contour, okay. Contour, um, okay, we don't see anything. That's because I have def to define the value range. Choose temperature here, delete the value, click on this small button, and uh, this is min and max, and I want 11 values generate apply and instead of pressure here for the coloring i want temperature k and i want a wireframe representation and now that starts to look very much like what i had and let's add this in the background with outline and now i'm getting something which is close now the if you want to change the background color uh, just search for background here and you can change the color to well let's not put totally white because the contour is white here let's put yeah um if you want to change the legend color there is uh, where is this but if you don't know how to use paraview i have a set of paraview uh, training videos on YouTube as well and so I advise you to go through this because it's really useful to be able to use Paraview. So okay edit color legend and here you can change the colors of the legend. Okay now it's better. Yeah um, yeah it looks a bit like if you compare it to what you got here yeah, it's the same. Cool. That that's very cool. Um, now let's have a look at the second thing I I needed to get is the the velocity magnitude, and this is the streamline contour by velocity magnitude. So to get this, we have to display the velocity. Um, and um, surface like this. Again, let's change the color to rainbow colors like this. 12 colors. Yeah. And um, let's add a filter. So you can, you can click control and space and then this will make this appear to apply faster the filters. So stream tracer and uh, I want a resolution of 100 points. Click and apply and now you see something that looks pretty much like, let's move it a bit, that's yeah, pretty much like what I have. Oh yeah, right. The, it's coloring by the pressure, so I want to color it by velocity. Yeah, 
and now, now we get really something with the same colors which is fine so you see the in the maximum temp velocity was 4.67 um, here and now here we have again I don't know why the legend already changed to changed again to white okay 4.8 so which is same right so that it means this is correct it's almost the same um, so that that's fine I'm getting a good value good results and uh, we are almost done for this tutorial so now if you of course there's a second part in the tutorial data analysis with user subroutine and you know I let you explore this part because this is even more advanced um, and this is really to compare with the, the data because this is um, this study is actually based on a, a very old paper that is I think it's mentioned at the beginning where it's taken from so they used they use a paper where is the paper Okay, the tutorial refers to classic natural convection benchmark cases of the Val, Davis, and co-workers. So you have the reference here. Th those are those are the papers. And if you want to get the same kind of results that you're getting into those papers, then you will need to post-process your data a bit more. And that's what is explained in the part two data analysis with user subroutine. So it tells you how to get the Nusselt number and uh, uh, and all of this and, and this is pretty advanced and but basically there is another that's why they, there's a CS user extra operation dot C which again does a lot of operation in the scripts and and I, I showed to you how to get this um, in the in the tutorial so you you have this as well on the repository on github so you can have a look at this and um, and see how you get those results and that's all for this so I hope this tutorial was useful and that it really helped you to get those solutions to this tutorial and thank you very much for watching if you like this video please put a like on it let me know put some comments on it always like very much when uh, people who uh, who thought this was useful uh, let me know that they they really uh, got a lot from from this thank you again and uh, see you for the next uh, tutorials